Hello, everyone. I am joined here by my man, Sasha. Sasha, how you doing, brother? I'm awesome. I am loving this conference. So cool. I honestly have been having an amazing time. <laughs> I have met so many great people, and everybody is super warm and welcoming, and it's, a, it's great vibes. I'm yeah. loving it. Yeah. Totally. I, I have to admit, it's a, I'm a first-timer, and this is my thesis. I'm working on this. You can try it out. And you guys out there, please tweet, it, tweet at me. Tell me. Just go ahead and at me. I don't care. I think that meeting in the real world, flesh to flesh, eye to eye, should be like a religious pilgrimage. I'm talking like at this level, and as VR developers, we should do this maybe every 10 years. And the rest of the time, we should work on bandwidth and getting VR so I don't have to. Because <laughs> I've met now 10 people who I only ever met in VR. I like every single one of them in real life. So what does that tell me? That tells me that my intuition still works in VR. And when we get eye tracking, hand tracking, realistic avatars and customized spaces and enough avatars in a space so we can do a party like this, why do I need to go anywhere? Right. And I mean, if it's going to be up to us, eventually the VR enthusiasts to practice what we preach and be like, OK, let's close the gap for real. Let's Absolutely. not go there and let's do it in VR. So check this out. In November, in, in November 2nd, Vancouver, VRAR Association, the VRAR show, Andy Fiedel is doing, I'm hoping not butchering that name, is doing uh, an awesome presentation. She's going to be remoting in, in VR. She's going to be running that section of the whole uh, conference from VR. So people can join on the conference floor or they can join in VR and they're going to get the same content. It's so amazing. Awesome. It has to happen. Living in the future is pretty freaking cool, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I kick myself or pinch myself pretty much every day. It's like, what the hell? Where this, am I? These are the years that like, I mean, I dreamed about this kind of stuff being available as a kid. And like, now that I'm here, I, I'm losing my mind. Like, that's why I'm here. That's why you're here. We're all about it. Yeah. And if you're not about it, you need to be. You got to get in. And Quest is the, Quest is the gateway drug. And I mean that in a really good way. We're going to have hand tracking. We're going to have full pass-through cameras so I can, you can walk around with your Quest on or ride your bike. Don't ever try that at home, kids, <laughs> And uh, from personal experience. And uh, yeah, bam. We're going to have portable, single headset, batteries. Bang, you can be in anywhere, anytime, anyplace. Right. And since we're talking about the future of this stuff a little bit, I am so excited because I mean, you know, with the with the announcement of the Oculus Link, you start to see this idea of PCs powering headsets externally. So once that happens, you know, like the Quest, for example, is an amazing opportunity, but there's still so much hardware inside of it. Yep. So we could drop all that hardware, go straight to being in a display, and I mean, how far away from something like that are we? House uh, prognosticating five to seven for a really good standalone uh, consumer level just in the glasses like this yeah. and I want this in I want this to be like the Bose AR I want spatial sixed off sound I want dual 4k front facing cameras oh, yeah. I want nine hours battery with a cable for all day you listening yeah, you listening build this build this and I want it to be AR to VR and I don't need BCI thank you very much it's really cool and everything that means brain control interface. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind Alex having access to my brainwave profile, but I don't what know a sweetheart. anyone else. <laughs> you're a sweetheart. So I want to talk a little bit about the project that you're working on. Oh, so yeah. tell me a little bit about the company, what you guys are working on, and uh, the idea behind it. Somnium space. So the word somnium comes from Latin. It means dream or sleep. It's around that idea. Literally, the boss, who was a big Second Life fan, a big Ultima Online fan, and he came from those backgrounds of real social VR with multiple players back in the 90s. And now suddenly we can't do social VR properly. So he just sat up in bed one night, literally from a dream. It's like, holy crap, I got to build it myself. So he's been going ever since. And the platform that we're developing is, is unlike anything I've seen before. And I'm not just saying that because I eat the dog food. I'm saying it because we have a bunch of features, at least five, that I haven't seen in any other app. I was a bit worried when I heard rumblings about, you know, Facebook and Oculus, they're gonna drop the Oasis on us, we're gonna be, all social VR is gonna be dead. No, totally not. We're still bringing stuff that's unique. 
Altspace, VRChat, everyone's still relevant. These guys are there too, and together we're building the metaverse, all of them together. The metaverse, I think, is a good way of putting it. If you're unfamiliar with Sol... How do you pronounce this? Somnium. Somnium. Somnium Space is, is the name of the app. Yep. And if you're completely unfamiliar with it, it's like... It's like a virtual world that is real, and is the best way I can absolutely. think of. The, the immersion, let's just talk immersion for a moment. The immersion that I get in that app is, like I've never had that depth of immersion just from watching a sunset or a sunrise. So when, when something is cool, it has, you have to pay. I like, you know, I paid an entry fee to this conference to get this beer, and I am loving this beer. And we're going to drink as many as we can for that entry fee. I'm going to drink at least three because I'm hardcore. But so, so Somnium is a five mile by five mile map. That may or may not change. All these, um, these are my own understanding. There may be errors and omissions. Nothing I say can be held against me in a court of law. Uh, so we're roughly a five by five map. And it takes you almost, let's say, 10 minutes to go from the center of the map to the mountains. And that's like either teleporting or walking with your controllers. Or if you've got full, on a full IK suit, you could walk just by walking. Or a, a, you know, a Virtuix Omni or something. Mm -hmm. So 10 minutes of walking gets you to the mountain. Another five minutes to climb the mountain. So now you're in for 15 minutes of time investment. Now I sit down under that tree Stars are going overhead, the moon is going down, I can hear the wind, and then the sunrise. Epic, totally epic. We do uh, procedurally generated clouds. Any object that you see is an actual object, it's not a texture. It's actually over there, you could go, if you see a bridge, you could walk over and walk on the bridge. If you see a person moving around two or three kilometers away, you could go and talk to them. It's one instance, single instance, persistent, Social VR with a blockchain backend. It, it's like no one's doing it. I think that blockchain backend thing is really what separates you guys from a lot of the other VR, social, more specifically, experiences. Um, so, day and night cycle. Yep. Is it, I mean, is it, it must be accelerated, right? It's accelerated. It is accelerated. Um, the final, uh, final time will be tweaked over time with user feedback. We're huge on our uh, community. We've got such amazing community members. We have people that have come directly from never having VR to, to finding us, to buying a VR headset, and we are their first point of reference for VR, and they are awesome. So these people are gonna be our, our moral compass and our, and our weather vane as far as what do we need to integrate, what order do we need to integrate features. We're just, we've just released the builder which is a 2D builder like desktop, sort of like The Sims, you know, plunk down your walls, your, your stuff. We have a professional game designer. He did in three hours, he built, like, I can't even, <laughs> it is so freaking cool. It's just like, boom, 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 boom. And you want, you've got, he's got a time lapse and you're just like. So the average guy could pick it up Absolutely. and crank something out. Absolutely, you could have yourself a decent house in a couple hours. Also, we have an asset store, we'll have an asset store, where either the company is gonna drop a ton of free assets you can drag and drop right into your scene, or you, if you've got some chops, some technical chops, Maya, Blender, um, you know, any of the VR sculpting programs that F export an FBX, you can now make an asset, put it in for approval. Once it's approved, it goes in the store. You set the price, small percentage goes to us, the rest goes to you and it's on the blockchain. So if you make a kick-ass, fill in the blank here, put it in the store, it can, you can make only 10 of them or only 100 of them or unlimited because it's on the blockchain. And even if for whatever reason you stopped playing, you wanted to do something different, you, you, know, you, you had eye strain and you couldn't use VR anymore, you, can, you still own those assets because they're registered to you on the blockchain. So even though you're not playing the game, you quit a year ago, everybody who's just logging on today who likes your stuff, they buy it, you're, you're getting compensated. Exactly. And then, it, so that's, I think we've already hit a couple of the unique affordances of, of this particular world. The one I'm really stoked about is called AdMix, A-D-M-I-X. 
The guy is named Sam Hubert. He's from France. Awesome guy. He's working with over 2,000 advertisers to create 3D virtual assets that I can pull into my scene and all we track is gaze. We don't care who you are, what you're doing, how old you are. If your headset looks at this beer while I'm drinking it, cha-ching, I just made a bit of money. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. So we're talking passive income streams, an economy. Because if any, uh, if any environment, any, so any virtual world has to have an economy. Time is money. You can't not have an economy. So, you know, some of the like, there are people who are like, oh, dude, I'm not interested. Oh, uh, advertising. Eh. If you're not paying something to somebody, then you are the product. And I don't want to be the product. I want to know where the economy is. And, I, and with, with our system, you know where it is. And I think it's important to reiterate the fact that this five by five world mile. is this five by five mile by five mile world is completely persistent. Yes. Like you build a house here, that house stays there. And that is the one server that everyone logs into. Is that true? It is. Uh, it'll be our own custom server design and it'll be a meshed server architecture. So multiple data centers, multiple servers. So for example, we have a bowling alley and one of our users figured out that if he stood in a certain spot and he's a Beat Saber guy, so he's got really good arm, he could throw, he could literally throw the bowling balls out the door. So <laughs> I- they land out there. And they keep rolling. <laughs> and they roll across the square, down the stairs and out into the field. And I'm like, how far? I freaking followed one of those balls for almost a kilometer until it went into a little bowl and then it just rolled around until it stopped. Now it was his bowling ball, so I couldn't pick it up, but it's persistent. And so if, if there's a, a block or a cube or a rock or any part of any of the mini games that, that is a movable object, I move it, I put it over there. When you come, it's over there. You move it back, when, when I come, it's over there. And if two people are up on the building watching, they see us moving the block back and forth because we're all in the same world. Wow, that's pretty cool. So five miles by five miles. I sure hope I'm right about that number. <laughs> yeah, it's five, it's five miles ish. Yeah, five mile ish. Yeah, ish. <laughs> Might be kilometers. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's big, okay? It's big. It is really big. And so one of my I, uh, one of the things that comes to my mind that I'm curious about is uh, like draw distance and stuff like yep. that. So you say someone standing on top of a building can see me on the floor. Yep. From how far away? Like how tall of a building? The, uh, the Somnium headquarters is 90 meters tall, and you can see a really long way. And so if even like the map, so if I, you have a tablet, just like in real life, you have a tablet in your pocket at all times, you whip it out, I can do a selfie, I can do, uh, I can bring up a web browser. One of our guys is off in the corner for like 40 minutes, like what the hell is he doing? He's like, dude, I'm playing Minecraft on my tablet in VR, in VR. it's so meta. <laughs> and he's like freaking out, right? You know, so. It's just, there's all these opportunities for, for emergent gameplay. And as far as, as far as draw distance, as far as draw distance, that's a super techie question. I'm the community guy. Right. It's, it's big. I can see what I need to see and the servers are passing things off dynamically. So as the bowling ball goes away from me, I'm, I'm not needing to calculate physics on that bowling ball anymore. I saw it go, it disappeared over there and you're over there, you see it coming, and now you're calculating physics on that bowling ball. Nice, so it sounds like it's doing a pretty good job of uh, making you really feel like you're in there then. We are, it's, it's one of the most immersive, uh, certainly one of the most immersive social VR worlds I've been in, and I've been in, like I was in VR chat before it launched on Steam, like early, early, and in Second Life, and I've had so many amazing social VR experiences but this one, as far as pure, raw, feeling like you're there in a special place, it's got, it's got them beat. Yeah, wow. Amazing. So what platforms are we looking at? What kind of timeline are we looking at? What kind of money are we looking at? Like, what, these are the questions we want to know. Okay. <clears throat> Currently, we're in uh, early access on Steam. You can go and download it today. Within, And it may even be updated to the launcher. So. Some of the games, like if you run uh, Assassin's Creed or um, uh, Star Citizen, the first thing you download is the launcher, and then the launcher updates and does things in the background to make sure the game is up to date. We're gonna run a similar thing, so there'll be a 2D app 
that'll allow you to look at the number of properties you own, manage certain things like, oh, I rented it to Alex. So while, while this rental contract is in, in uh, effect, and oh, it's on the blockchain, so it's in effect. You own the property, you have certain rights. I can't take those until that contract expires. And this is why blockchain um, tokens are so amazing because they contain the contract inside the token. And when it is executed, like a time clock runs down, done, execute, no questions. The land reverts to me or unless you want to renew. So um, yeah, it all, it all comes together in the, the back end in terms of the blockchain. And then the front end is owning virtual assets, owning, um, physically owning a scarce resource. And people are like, scarcity in VR, that's stupid. Maybe, but this is the way we're thinking to do it. Exclusivity sells. And we're, we are, we're not exclusive because you can come and play mini games for free. You can go competitive rock climbing, you can go kayaking, you can you know, rent a bike. If somebody makes a bike on a, a scripted bike, you can go rent it and ride to the mountains and climb and watch the sunset, all for free anytime. Or, like me, you can deep dive, eat the Kool-Aid, take the candy, get in there and build a house, buy a kayak, go kayaking in the morning, you know. So price of admission is is free. Zero for zero for access. Free open. It's open for everybody. So you're gonna get in and then you're gonna realize how much you freaking love it and you're gonna be like, well, I need to build something now. <laughs> exactly. So then you build it and then you sell it and then that's where these guys come in and finally get compensated for all their hard work. We're we're doing crowd crowdfunding. So we did a an original um, raise in the UK that basically sold. Um, shares in the actual company with the vision and the white paper of where we're going and how we're going to get there. Then we did an Indiegogo for virtual land. That's where I bought in and a bunch of other bo people bought in at that level. The next one, we're going to auction off the 4,000-ish remaining chunks of virtual real estate. There, It's an open auction just like eBay. It's going to start low. It's going to run for seven days and whatever it sells for at the end is what it sells for. And there's small, medium, large. So, you know, probably for around 100 bucks or even less, you can have yourself a piece of land. And it won't ever get cheaper than that. No. So now would be the time or when this starts. October what, what, 6th. October 6th is what we're looking at. Yep. So you guys are pretty much there. We are so there, but we're also so far to go. Always. We're always iterating. We're a small team. We're nimble. We're bringing in. We're, our, our, our goal is pretty much to support any haptic or any input. You can run it on Pimax, you can run it on Steam, you can run it on Index, you can run it on not PlayStation, sorry to say, any PC. VR sorry, PSVR owners, sorry guys. you're used to it. <laughs> but there, even then, there's got to be a way. But, you know, <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're rolling out updates regularly. If there's a bug, then there's a hot fix. We're small, we're nimble, and these, these are, the guys are basically Russian hackers. I don't know how they do this stuff, but <laughs> they do it. Well, honestly, Somnium Space, to me, is one of the most intriguing projects that I've heard of in a long time. I love the idea of the persistence. I love the idea of community uh, being able to take part, and not only that, but like being able to maybe make a little bit of money by contributing and being a part of an experience like this. So. Yep. And that's what it's all about. We, are, we aren't anything except our community, as every, every social VR app lives and dies on its community. And we have such an awesome community. We have an amazing dev team. We have a really responsive management team. And we have a ton of really cool stuff in the pipeline or already coming out. We're going to do, so for example, we have a strategic alliance with Sony. S grab a Sony phone, scan your head, mm -hmm. boom, there's your head on your avatar, done. And it's a 3D scan of you. It's a little uncanny, it's a little uncanny valley, but it's, there it is. Some people want to roll that way. If you want to do uh, more like a VR chat style avatar and you've got trackers and you want to go full dance dance, you can pull in uh, an open, you know, um, an open source avatar, one on Creative Commons, put it into our avatar builder, rig, 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 few clicks, few clicks, upload, boom. Now it's in your inventory, bring it in, done. That's sick. It's coming. And we, we want it to be easy especially for people who don't have a ton of VR experience. It sounds amazing. I, I'm super, super intrigued, and it sounds like you guys are doing awesome stuff. I mean, you're obviously doing awesome stuff. Uh, the gamer in me has another question for you. Yeah, so this is a social experience. You go in there, you hang out with everyone, but 
where where my skills come into play. What, what can I? Is there anything you know, like a ball I can throw or something I can shoot at? Anything like that? Can you bowl three hundred? Not yet. I can <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, we have bowling already. Sure, lots of people have bowling. We have you can put curve on it. You can put. I've never seen a bowling game where I can put spin on the ball and have it curve in to hit that second pin and boom. So we got competitive head-to-head -head climbing. And when you talk about esports, I'm super into Echo VR. I love that game. Got too many hours on it. And that's a specialized app for a specialized game. If you think about, uh, let's see, um, the Wave VR or the Wave XR now. That's a specialized app for consuming live electronic music, roughly speaking, mm -hmm. right? Maybe they'll branch out. That app is killer for that. So what did we do? We said the metaverse is not going to be one app. It's not going to be the oasis where one giant mega evil company controls everything. Right. It's going to be a bunch of smaller companies all linking, feeding each other, sharing, right? So I've got a, a virtual house in my, uh, a virtual house, a virtual office, virtual space. I invite you over, we're hanging out, we're having some beers, talking, whatever. If you haven't ever tried drinking a beer through the hole of your Vive controller, awesome. <laughs> I actually have never, never yeah. considered that. You have to have a real, a, a virtual beer too, because it's totally weird. <laughs> anyway, so we're hanging out at my place, and you're like, you know what, I'm feeling like uh, there's a great party happening over in, uh, in Hi-Fi, in High Fidelity. Boom, look, I got my transporter in the corner, I bought it. So when you, we use it, you're going to use up a few pennies to go through my transporter. One of the destinations is going to be Hi-Fi. Click, transition animation, bam, we're in Hi-Fi. No, no Oculus Home, no Steam VR Home, no loading. It, you have to have both apps on your computer. It loads one in the background and, and brings it to the front and injects you in seamlessly. And if we know the company, like we work with uh, Janus VR, VR Blockchain Alliance, we're talking about interoperability of blockchain assets. So I have a badass lightsaber that I really enjoy. I bring it over to Janus, it still works. And oh, they have an in-game currency, guess what? Seamless wow. seamless uh, exchange rates as I go across with my, with my money bag or whatever, right? Are we manifesting the singularity right now? I certainly hope so, because I want to upload my consciousness before I friggin' <laughs> Fade away. <laughs> I feel like the world as we know it is not going to look the same in 30, 40 years. It, it's, it's off the hook. And the weirdest thing, I, you probably experienced this, is when you talk to people who haven't experienced it. Like I was hooking up with this, uh, talking to this guy in a, in a hotel the other night. Young guy, millennial, done amazing things, like worked in refugee camps. He'd never tried VR. We talked for a couple hours. I'm like, okay, you're ready. Put him on the quest and you just freak out he's just you know and he's and it's like and then he got it then he got what i'm talking about why i'm here why i'm doing this why i believe so strong why i've got the passion you know we you and i every practically speaking everyone here you are a pioneer if you're getting into vr right now you're a pioneer if you're watching my channel you're definitely a pioneer totally <laughs> and 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 pioneers are there's pioneers for when Microsoft started, there was pioneers when the telephone started, there was pioneers when Steam started. And all those early adopter people, they got to say, number one, they got to say, I was there when it started. And number two, a bunch of them made a ton of money and helped thousands and thousands and millions of people have a better life. And it's cool. It's freaking cool. <laughs> Well, this has been an amazing time, Sasha. Thank awesome. you so much for approaching me. Yeah. You came up to me and was like, let's talk. You so need content. This is the real deal. Sasha's awesome. Yep. Somnium Space is awesome. Yep. And VR is awesome. So you follow Alex already. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at S-L-E-B-A-R-O-N, at s -E -A -R -O -N, at I'm on Twitter. We're, we've got a really active Discord. Join the Discord. I can't throw the link out because it's got weird Discord numbers on it, but it's on somnium.com, somniumspace.com. You'll find the download links for the app. You do need a decent computer. It will probably run on an i5 with a 970. So it's, and, oh, cool, cool factor. PSA, it's going to come on the go, and it's going to be cross-play with all other platforms. Dude. 
and on the quest as soon as we can uh, browbeat Oculus into letting us in. That's huge. I can't believe we haven't mentioned that until right now. Uh, uh, the best for last. That's best freaking last. huge. Yeah, it's huge. Well, Sasha's the real deal. Hit him up on Twitter. He's a nice guy. He'll talk to you. And uh, get on Somnium Space. Go check it out. Yeah. Build something. Let's, let's make this happen. Talk to me. Come for a tour. I'm happy to show people around. We do uh, bowling every Wednesday, 1 o'clock Pacific. Movie night is Thursday, 2300 Pacific. And then open mic is 1300 Saturday. And that's usually where the founder is in. And he will answer any question. And he loves a good debate. So bring your objections, bring your suspicions, bring it all. Bring your ideas. We're, we're always open to community. Keep it real. Be authentic. Just like this guy. Thanks again, Sasha. We'll see you guys next time. Talk to you.